Hi guys, it's Tan, and in this first series, I want to talk a little bit about the misunderstood zodiac signs. The reason why I'm making this series is because I feel like there's a lot of people who go and try to find information about their sun signs and, and they read up information that is actually telling them about the archetype of their sun sign, not the sun in that particular sign, and then they get a little um, confused. And then they feel that astrology doesn't actually work but the reason why that's happening is because they are or if you're one of those people you might be thinking that for example if you're an Aquarius you might think that the archetype of Aquarius is equal to the Sun in Aquarius which um, is not true they are not equal so just to kind of explain this in a very simple and easy to understand way when they talk about aquarius as a sign it's almost like you're saying that this person has their sun in aquarius moon in aquarius venus mars mercury jupiter saturn pluto um, and all their planets in aquarius in the 11th house all right and the truth of the matter is that nobody in the entire world I don't think there's anybody in the entire world who could possibly have such a combination. Um, you could be an Aquarius sun, you could have your moon in let's say Aries, and then you could have your Venus in Pisces, maybe you have your Mercury in Aquarius, um, and maybe you have your Jupiter in Gemini. So we are all actually a mixture of all of these signs, and they're all within us. They just play out in different aspects of our lives. So. That's why I call this series the Misunderstood Signs series. The sun itself is telling of the person's identity. So, and, in the, and when the sun is in a particular sign, it's about the style of their identity. It's how, it's the style of how they go about in the world trying to identify themselves as being in the world. If that makes any sense. Um, knowing someone's sun sign does not tell you about how they are in love relationships. It does not tell you about their career choices. It doesn't tell you about their hobbies, how they think, how they communicate, their life mission, or any of those things. It is just their identity and the style of being in the world. Um, so I think there's a bit of a caution that goes in when you um, are trying to learn more about just your sun sign and there's not a lot of information out there about talking purely of your sun sign so I hope that this series is going to help you with that um, and also I kind of just wanted to defy stereotypes because that's what I like to do okay I think that it's time to start so I'm going to quickly apparate and then we're gonna get started. The misunderstood cancer. So uh, a few cancer archetypes that not all cancers are gonna be able to identify with is that they're needy, clingy, and super emotional. Um, do they have a moon in cancer or Scorpio or Pisces? If not, they might not be the most emotional. Um, so Cancer does sit right between um, Gemini, Leo, Taurus, and Virgo. So most likely if you have a Sun in Cancer, you could possibly have other personal planets like Venus, Mercury, um, maybe even Mars in those signs, but Mars could go even further. So you would have a combination of signs. So looking at the Sun in Cancer, this is one where we have an identity that is not so well defined. So we can have someone that tends to link their identity to how much they can give and provide to other people, especially their loved ones. Their identities can be linked to how responsible they are in their life and their ability to make their loved ones happy, which if you think about it, does sound pretty great, doesn't it? It seems like um, you're the provider, you're the person who wants to give love to everybody else. But I think that having an identity tied to something like that is putting a lot of pressure on you so if you always have to be doing things for other people so that you can feel you know whole um, when a sun in cancer is not very mature what they tend to do is um 
kind of instead of identifying instead of having a life and having themselves identified with being a provider they would identify themselves with their emotions and that is really the worst way to go about because we all know that emotions change they um like they're like the waves of the ocean they come and they go and a cancer who is maybe younger or not so mature tends to kind of um, think that they are their emotions so when they're depressed they tend to think that they are a depressed individual or if they're happy they tend to think that they are a happy person um, which is yeah it's not really the right way to go about it and that kind of um, really makes the people around them really confused and really unsure of where they're coming from and um, it's just a downward spiral in general but on the upside a mature and grown cancer son is going to be a person who is going to identify with providing love providing nurturing um, making sure that their loved ones are happy and i think that in general has absolutely nothing to do with being emotional i think that when the cancer finally matures they actually um, can really understand the wisdom of emotions um, because you know they go from identifying themselves to their emotions to really understanding that these emotions are always changing so they cannot identify with them so they take this knowledge this experience that they've had with their emotions to understand how um, emotions always fluctuate you know there are some people who might go throughout the rest of their lives not being aware of this because it's just not something that um, is a priority in their lives unlike someone who had a son in cancer who would um, really look into this kind of stuff and feel that it is a priority in their lives because they could find that their emotions are no longer serving the people around them it's no longer helping them or helping the people around them so they really look into it and then become this person who is the master of emotions of being wise about the emotions surpassing all the waves of emotions so that they can better function in a way that is a, being becoming a provider for other people so the tarot card that i've picked out that i think really um can explain the sun and cancer much more and i've picked this purely from my own interpretation not from any books and not from um any kind of theory um the card that i've picked is this beautiful lady right here she is the empress okay so if you look at the card carefully she's sitting on a throne she's surrounded by a very lush surrounding um, she's holding this circular ball and a scepter and she's got a protective shield which does symbolize her ability to protect those loved ones around her and she's basically in summarizing her in one word she is the mother of everyone and I feel like the Sun in Cancer is pretty much like this Empress right here you know she sits when she manages to gather um, everything that she needs in terms of materials she doesn't want much she just wants enough to make her loved ones happy and when she has all of it she sits and she protects everyone she looks after them she nurtures them um, she gives them what they need and um, without having to sacrifice herself and without having to um, be ruled by her emotions she's not one to be ruled by emotions at all guys so my experience with cancers I don't actually know that many cancers but the ones that I do know um, I can remember them pretty well so the first things that I noticed with someone who has their son in cancer is I'm sorry to say this I don't mean to offend you but what I like um, meet them they seem to look really tired I'm not sure why um, I have this cancer friend and whenever I meet him um, he'd be like really sweaty like he's just been doing really hard work or something and then he'd be like oh give me a hug and then I'd be like okay and then I'd hug him and then I'd be thinking like oh my god dude you're so sweaty but anyways <laughs> Yeah, they tend to kind of just look a little bit tired and a little bit like, oh, like a little bit messy and tired. Um, that's the first thing I notice about people with their sons in cancer. The second thing is that 
They tend to have this very genuine and innocence about them that really, I feel, um, makes them really vulnerable to people who don't have the best of intentions. What I mean by this innocence and genuinity, genuineness, is that they would speak from their heart. You know, they would say what they really think and they would say what they really feel. They have no kind of... They don't intend to go around the situation or try to paint a better picture of themselves or anything like that. Not saying that they're truthful. Um, they might lie, I don't know. But from my experience, they... Um, if something is really true to their heart, you know, they would they're not gonna be afraid to actually tell you that this is what's in my heart, kind of a thing, you know? They might tell white lies, I don't know. Oh, and another thing that they all really have in common, I don't know why, um, but they tend to, um, I, I thought that this would be like a Cancer Moon thing, but it also turns out to be a Cancer Sun thing, that they tend to um, say things like, oh, do you remember the time when, do you remember when we did that? You know, that kind of thing, just kind of, um, an, reminiscing about the past and the things that um, you know maybe I did with them in the past or things that they did in the past which I really like um, um, yeah and if you are a cancer I definitely know that we're gonna be eating a lot especially um, indulging in comfort food so I'm looking forward to it all you cancers out there that is my take on the Sun and the misunderstood Sun in cancer I hope that you um, understand cancers a little bit more um, and I hope this was helpful for you not all cancers are emotional but they just tend to all be providers of some sort which I think is a great quality to have um, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you like this kind of a content, then please subscribe and hit the notification button. If you ha are a Cancer or if you have experiences with a Cancer and you would like to share them, please feel free to leave a comment below. I would love to read it. And I'm going to see you next time in the next video. Bye!